Good evening, church family. We want to make you welcome here in person and, and those watching online. Um, we have a couple things tonight we need to go over before we get started with our service. Uh, first of all, we're excited about our service tonight. Um, Miss Joy and Miss Cha has done a really good job the last two weeks. And I mean, it's just awesome to, to hear different people get up here and speak from the different perspectives that the Lord's given them. And if you've not seen those two services, go back and watch them. Miss Joy's done a great, great job on, on seeking the Lord. And then Miss Cha done an awesome job on, on sharing the Lord. And now tonight, Sister Angel's going to talk about how we serve the Lord. So it, it's, it's going to be a, a great thing. And we learned last week and the first week that he's what? He's still what? He's still the one. He's still the one. So let's not forget that. A couple of announcements. Just, um, we don't really have many of them, but just the discipleship opportunities on Tuesday mornings at 10 15 and just hit, um, well, that's, uh, I'm sorry, at, at 10 o'clock on Tuesday mornings. There you go, Weekday Warriors. Then we also have them on uh, Wednesday night, tonight at 7. Then we have them on Sunday morning. We have two separate classes going on. Um, Pastor Mark sent an email yesterday. We're going to do uh, some things a little different come the fall. We're excited about that. Be in prayer for that because we're going to gear pretty much September and October in all about discipleship and just the importance of discipleship. And we're actually going to be, going to be doing a book called Follow Me by, by Lee Grady. Awesome, awesome book on how we can raise disciples like Jesus did. Not like so-and-so did or not like this other person did, but like Jesus did. And that's how we need to be raising disciples is, is like he did. Um, that's the only announcements we have. A um, couple of prayer requests we want to want to mention. Uh, Miss Rachel Stanley, it's a blessing to see her here tonight. Amen. Miss Rachel, we're, we're praying for you. We're, we're sorry for your loss, but you know you got a church family that's here for you. And I don't know how people get through life without a church family. I, I just be honest with you, I really don't. Because when tough times come, they do. When hard times come, we know they do. You've got a church family that's, that'll love you to death. They'll be there for you to bring you food, to bring you hope and encouragement. And it's just it's keep, keep her in prayer, not just this week. And don't forget about that this week. Keep her in prayer in the weeks to come, the months to come, because it, it's going to be a tough journey. But we know she's a woman of great faith. We know she serves a great God, and He's going to keep He's going to keep her. He's going to keep her steadfast. And Miss Rachel, we're praying for you guys. Um, Dale Parker, just be praying for him, Miss, Miss Faye Jernigan, uh, Donnie Tart Sr., Les Goodwin, and then there's several of us that'll be traveling. We pray for Pastor Mark and his family, Taylor and us, and Jonathan Hall. Heather, different ones of us will actually be traveling down to Florida, Angel, because of a conference stuff going on. So we, we got a long ways to go, about a six and a half hour trip. So just pray for grace and mercy as we travel. And services here still be uh, be good. Things will still go on. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit don't leave just because certain people leave. He stays here. He'll be with us. He, he'll be with you guys. So it'll be a great, great time. Um, if you will, will you please stand? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray for Sister Angel tonight. I know she's going to do a great job. I, I, I don't doubt that. I've heard her teach in our, our Sunday morning classes. I heard her preach just this past Sunday. I watched it online. And she's going to do a great job tonight because she's led by the Lord. And as long as you're led by the Lord, you can't fail. You're going to do a great job. So we're excited about that. Let's pray for Pastor Mark tonight. He's away. He's, he's actually speaking at another church. Um, let, let's pray for him. Because like I said, the Holy Spirit's not just limited here. It's with Pastor Mark also there. So let's pray for him. Pray with me. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your many blessings in life. Father, we do thank you for this time that we can come in your house with your people, Lord, and we can worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we thank you for a time like this where we can get away from the world, Father. We can get away from jobs. We can get away from family situations. We can get away from the chaos that goes on all around us when we're outside of church. And we can actually come to a place that we call a church. Even though we are the church as, as individuals, we can come to a place we call a church with like-minded believers. And we can come here and we can join together in unity. And we can just worship you, Father, because you are truly worth, worth of all the worship we can possibly give you. So we thank you for opportunities like this, Father. Help us to never take this for granted, Lord. And Lord, there's so many needs in our church body. There's so many needs of those watching online tonight. Father, we don't know them all. Father, we can't even express them all. But your word tells us that before we even say a word, that you already know the needs that we have. Before we even shed a tear, Father, you know the needs that we have. So, Father, tonight we just give all of our needs to you, Father, whether it's physical, mental, spiritual, financial, emotional, whatever the case may be, Father. We lay them down at the foot of the cross because we know you can do all things but fail. Your word has given us so many promises, Father, that we can rely on, Father, in our time of need. So, Father, there are some tonight who need you to be their peace. There are some tonight that need you to be their
their healer. There are some tonight that need you to be their savior. Father, there are some tonight that need you to lead and to guide them. They have decisions that they have to make. Lord, you tell us in your word that you are the great I am. You are what we need in our time of need, and you do not change. Though our situations change, though things around us change, though we change ourselves, you are unchanging. Father, you are unshakable. And we thank you for that, Father. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you mean to us. So tonight, Father, we just declare your promises over our people. We declare your promises over those watching online, over those here in person, Father. We declare the promises of your word because they are yes and they are amen. You are faithful to who you are. You are faithful to your word. So, Father, we are excited tonight to be in your presence, to worship you. We are excited about the word that you have for us. So, Father, I pray, Lord, tonight, anyone watching online, whether it's tonight or whether it's a week, a month, a year from now, Father, if they don't know you, that something is said, that maybe a song they hear, something pricks their heart, the Holy Spirit convicts them, and they come to know you before it's eternally too late. Father, we want to see souls saved, but we also want to see disciples raised. So, Father, we love you. We praise you. We honor you, Father. We glorify you for who you are and for what you mean to us. Father, thank you for this night. Thank you for allowing us to be here in person. Lord, we love you. We praise you. Father, let it be done. Let it be so. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the one true and only living God, and the church body said, Amen and amen. Turn around and greet three or four people before we get to a time of worship. Let's just draw close to the Lord's name.
draw closer to him tonight. Lord, just give us that in our lives. And we just open ourselves up to you for you to lead us and to guide us to serve you better. And we just give you praise and we give you glory for being such a great God. We honor you and we give you glory. Amen and amen. You may be seated tonight. Welcome, Sister Angel, to the podium as she comes tonight. Good evening. So tonight we're talking about he's still the one that we serve. Heather, will you turn me down just a tad bit? So what's funny is Pastor Mark, on Sunday morning, we go to the back and we pray before service. And he says, yes, yeah, so be praying for me because this week I'm preaching on the one we're still seeking. And I was like, mm, that can't be right. It's supposed to be served. <laughs> and so we, he gets done praying. And I said, hey, Pastor Mark, um, it's supposed to be seeking or serving, right? He said, no, he said, God gave me another word for seeking. And I said, well, that really ain't fair because everybody got their nuggets from your preaching and you're not going to do one for me. <laughs> How do I know I'm going on the right road, on the right path? He said, I'm trusting that God will give you the word. So tonight we're talking about he is still the one that we serve. And when I say serve, I'm going to ask you, what comes to your mind when you hear God and serve? What comes to your mind? Anybody? Teaching Sunday school. Teaching Sunday school. Hmm? Giving to the poor. You read some of my notes. Praying for others. Praying for others. Hmm? Worship. Worship. Using your talent. Most of those are things that we do in the church. Like we have Carl that stands at the road and that waves that you're having a bad day, your day gets better when you walk in, and then you see Leroy that's been standing at the steps, and we know he's been there for at least two, two and a half hours maybe, and praying over everybody that's going to be coming through the parking lot and people riding up and down the road. You go park, you come to the door, and who do you have? You have Miss Lynn. No matter how many times we tell her, go sit down, we'll stand at the door. It's no, no, no. See, she knows your name. She knows your name. She knows all names. She doesn't forget names because that's what she does. Then you have Miss Sue, Miss Teresa, and Miss Caroline that help you get seated, to help you find a seat. Then you have Pastor PJ in the back that's helping come up with ideas to keep your children intrigued, wanting more, to learn more about God and what God has to offer. And then you have those who are spending time that's been preparing for the Sunday school message. You have the worship team who stays late sometimes, who practice. Some that leave and go on vacation and then drive an hour back just to play a piano for our service and then drive back over an hour to go back on vacation because that's what he's been called and failed, that he feels that he has been called to do. We have an, a pastor that spends countless amount of hours preparing sermons, preparing for our church. Then you have those that are behind the scenes. You have those that are working the sound booth. And when I say that they work in the sound booth for hours, that's, that's no joke. We learned that um, over the past six months, staying until almost midnight, trying to get the sound right for the plays, the Easter plays, the Christmas plays. But you don't hear them talking about that. But they're back there. They're getting the, the mics ready for funeral service, for plays, for church services, for those up here singing. It's much more than just pushing a button back there. Amen. You have Miss Brandy in the nursery, Miss Taylor in the nursery, our first lady, Miss Fields, in the nursery. You have our security team that's behind the scenes. You have those back there cooking and preparing food. For those that we sometimes walk out and are like, what are we having today? We don't even know what they do. Then you have them that stay and clean, to help clean up. And there's so much more that happens that serves. But serving God goes far beyond what happens in the walls 
of this church building. I believe it starts here, but I believe it's supposed to go far beyond these walls. But in order to serve God properly, there's something that we need to understand in order to be able to serve him the way that God calls us to serve him. And I believe that is the only way. The only way to understand is to have God's love and to know how to love others as God has called us to love others. It's impossible to completely understand the depths of God's love because if I'm being honest, for me anyway, um, <laughs> it's hard for me to wrap my head around it. It's unfathomable to me, his love for us, because we fail him daily. Like, why? Why, why, would, why, would, why do you love me? I fail you daily. Why do you love me? You surely don't need me. He doesn't need me. He doesn't need me at all. But he loves us anyway. We begin to understand God's love, and we begin to know him through that love when we begin to seek him. And we seek him, like Joy said, by reading his word, praying, listening for his voice. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Not part of your heart, not a portion of your heart, but all of your heart. And when we find him, we get to know him. And the more we know him, the more we want to share him with others, right? Because when you've had a taste of them, you don't want to keep it all to yourself. You want to share it. And when we share him and we share the gospel and we share the salvation that he offers us, that's part of serving him. I say it begins with love because my word says it all began with love. It begins with God and God is love. If God wasn't love, he wouldn't have made a way when there was no way. So Matthew 22, 37 and 38 says, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And it says this is the first and greatest commandment. And then we have John 13, 34 and 35. A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you, so that you must love one another. But this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. And I read these because I know that I cannot be the only one who finds it. Forgive me, Lord. I can't be the only one that finds it really, really hard sometimes to love people it's really hard sometimes as much as I do not want to admit it I will admit it I won't lie it is really hard to love some people some people I feel like they make it their life's mission to make people not want to love them I don't say that to be funny I say it because it's true for me anyway we want to think we can love everybody, or we want to think that we do, but let's face it, the flesh part of us automatically wants to find reasons not to love someone. The flesh in us sees someone doing something that maybe we can't do, and automatically the flesh starts to feel that envy or that jealousy. The flesh automatically starts to find reasons to hold grudges, reasons to find fault in others. But 1 John 4, 7 and 8 says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. And you may be thinking, Angel, what in the world does love have to do with serving God? And trust me, I thought that when I was preparing this message, but God said, I've got you. Because when someone has hurt us, or someone has wronged us, or hasn't been just nice in general, we tend to not want to do anything for them, right? We tend to say, whatever, you can help yourself. Find somebody else to help you because you shouldn't have been mean to me, so you'll think about that next time. That used to be the way I would think. I used to think, well, you did it to yourself. 
And then I tend to want to distance myself from them. But God has shown me a lot of things over the years. He has shown me, and I will admit this, and I will forgive people over and over. I will because it is a commandment and it is a requirement of God. I will continue to forgive, but I will continue. Like if it continues to happen, I will distance myself, and I think that's for my own health. But when we have the love of God, the love that God has shown us, the love that Jesus speaks about, the love Jesus says that we are to have, it makes us want to serve even those people, those people that we've wanted to turn our backs on and say, find somebody else. When we have that love, it means that we have a heart to help. No matter who it is, no matter what they've done, we want to help them some way or another. I've had instances in my life where somebody has hurt me, I mean hurt me terribly, and it took me, how old am I, 46, right, 46, yeah, 46, it took me probably about, sorry, I have to ask my daughter, it took me probably about 35 years to forgive them, and I never in my life thought I would forgive them. But the more I seeked God, the more I read his word, the more I prayed, the more God showed me that I needed to be praying for that person. And I thought, but God, <laughs> do you know what happened? He's like, yep, yeah, I know what happened. Praying for that person is a part of serving God. So when we have that love, when we have the love of a God, and we put that love first and put our flesh last, then you'll find yourself wanting to pray for others. You'll find yourself wanting to do more for others. Matthew 25, 35, I'm going to start there. It says, For I was hungry. And you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when, when, did, you, when did I see you that you were hungry, and I fed you? Or when were you thirsty and I gave you something to drink? When did we see you as a stranger and invite you in? Or needing clothes and I clothed you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? And the king will reply, mm -hmm. Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. See, we serve him by his we serve him by following his teachings. We serve God by following his word. It's much more than what we can imagine is serving. We got to think of, we got to think of what's happening outside of the box. It's obeying his word. And John, 20, John 12, 26 says, Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honor the one who serves me. So when you're serving others, you're serving God. So how should we be serving? God has called us. We all have different gifts. We all have different talents. I can look around this room and see so many gifts and so many talents. We can either use them for our own good or we can use them to serve God. But when we use our gifts for our own good, to feel better about ourselves, to gain the earthly rewards or to get earthly boosts or to brag about ourselves for praises, that's not serving God. That's what we do to serve ourselves. I put a lot of scripture in here. I like to back it up with scripture. So Matthew 6, 2 says, so when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumps, trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have reached their reward in full. 1 Corinthians 13, 3, If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body of hardships that I may boast, but do not have love, then I gain nothing. 
So if you're just given to give, what have you gained? You've done it in vain. You've absolutely gained nothing. How many know that serving God is a privilege? When we serve others, we're serving God. So how can we serve God? How can we serve him outside of what we do in this, in this building? We can serve him by telling others about him. We can serve him by witnessing to others. The grocery store, Walmart, pumping gas. There's many ways to serve him. Serve him, and I wrote down the state fair. And I'll tell you why there's a story behind it. I went to the state fair and was handing out tracts near the gate. I was talking to people, asking people, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And the security guard came up and said, ma'am, you're going to have to stop or we're going to have to ask you to leave. And I said, mm-mm. Now, this, this is when I really started following God. Like, this is before I even met my husband. So I was, I didn't have a complete grasp on it. I was a lot, I want to say I was a lot like Paul. I was feisty. I didn't care what you say. I was going to tell you about Jesus, whether you wanted to know about it or not. If I had to beat you over the head and knock you out for you to hear it, then I would have done so. Didn't matter to me. So I kept handing out tracts. Well, I went on in the fair, and I had a lady tap on my shoulder. She said, you gave me this tract, didn't you? I said, I sure did. She said, well, can you tell me about Jesus? I said, you doggone skippy, I can. I told her about him, and she gave her life to Christ. And I said, see? I told my friend, I said, see what happens? I said, see what happens when you don't listen to people? You just follow what God says? But I had to think, is that what God was saying? Did he say keep disobeying what you were being told? But that's a part of learning and seeking and hearing him, hearing his word. You can also give your testimony to people. And I used to say that I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to tell my testimony because um, there were parts of my testimony I didn't want people to know. I gave part of my testimony um, last week. It was just a a smidge of it. It wasn't even the bad parts of it. But I said, well, one day I'll give my testimony. But then part of me says, you don't want people to know that. You don't want people to know that. Girl, do you know what people would think about you? Because let's face it, if we're being honest, we're in church, let's at least be honest in here. You can hear things about people, even if it was from long ago. And things tend to stay with them. When you see that person, the enemy tries to remind you of those things that God brought them out of. Instead of looking at them as blessings, the enemy will get you to look at them as other things. So that tends to keep people from wanting to give their testimonies. But you have to say, oh, well. Because I'd rather have 10 people judge me and one person to be reached than to have people not judge me and that person to still be lost, thinking there is no hope to get out of what they got themselves into. Another reason I don't like doing it is because I don't really like talking much about myself. (laughs) I tend to keep things in. And I don't want to sound like I'm some holy roller, Bible-thumping girl who just has it all together because, let's face it, I do not have it all together. My daughter thinks I do. My husband thinks I do, but I do not have it all together. I tend to shy away from telling people, and I know this sounds bad, that God healed my heart. Because part of me feels like it's, I don't know how to put it in words, almost like, I think Satan wants me to think, oh no, don't tell people God healed you. That'll seem like you're bragging and you're better because God didn't heal them, but he healed you. And God says, oh no, no, I didn't heal you for you to keep it to yourself. You tell your testimony because it gives other people hope. You tell your testimony because there's things that other people are going through and they think they're alone and you could have been going through that and God brought you from it. But you tell your testimony, that's serving God. When you're putting yourself out to bring that glory to God and what God has done 
for you that's serving God. Philippians 1.29 says, For you have been given the privilege of serving Christ, not only by believing him, but also by suffering for him. And, you know, sometimes we suffer through things, and that's how we have that testimony. Sometimes we have to go through things to have that testimony because it's going to bring somebody else through it. And I used to wonder, my mom got breast cancer. My mama is my mom. She's like the bestest ever. That woman will cook a meal and take it to you. She will pray for you. She would give you the clothes off her back as long as she's got another one to put on. And she ain't running around with no shirt on. It was a joke. So when she got breast cancer, I thought, God, why? This woman does so much. I mean, she's the primary caregiver for my brother. If you've met my brother, he's special needs. There's not many people that, there's only two people, and he doesn't sleep alone. He has to have someone sleep with him. He has to be monitored almost 24-7. There's only two people that will, he will allow to sleep with him, and that is me and my brother. I mean, my mother. So neither me and my mom have ever been able to go on vacation. We've never been able to have a girls' weekend because there's nobody Hunter will stay with. <laughs> it's a special feeling, and it's a, wow, I wish I had some mommy time. But when she got breast cancer, I thought, God, wow, this is my mama. Look what all she does. Look what she, she does everything possible for everybody. There is not, there is not a selfish bone in this woman's body, not one selfish bone in her body. So we went to the doctors, went for her treatments. And when we were there, she said, Angel, look, they're over there crying. We should pray for them. I said, Mama, you're getting ready to go in for treatment. You've never done this before. We need to be praying for you. She said, no, we need to go ask them if we can pray for them. So we did. They were like, you want to pray for us? Yep, we want to pray for you. My mama wants to come and pray with you. We got to know people there. We pray for them every time we go. Somebody accepted Christ when we were there. The doctor wasn't a Christian. She would ask mama different questions when she would come in. Like, there is a reason we go through trials. There is a reason we go through things. There is a reason I know that my mama had breast cancer. Because she reached people that otherwise would have not been reached. She was in a place that God needed her to be with her boldness. She was in a place with her big mouth daughter, that would be me, <laughs> that's loud and will pray. It doesn't matter who you are. That's what was needed at that time, at that place. Now, it's nothing for her to walk up. You need to pray for you? What can I pray for you about? Do you need anything? Angel, this is a person sick. We're going to make something and take it to them. Okay. That's my mama. And she is in remission. Praise the Lord. <laughs> But sometimes we wonder, why do we have to go through something? Why do we have to go through this? God, I've been faithful to you. Why? I've served you. I've done this. I've done that. Because it's not about us. It's never been about us. It's about where he's going to take us from. He's not going to take us over it. He's not going to take us around it. He's going to take us right on through it. Because without that experience, without going through it, we can't help someone else get through it. We can't show someone else the hope that comes from serving God. So how else can we serve them? We help other people who are in need. We take them dinner when they're sick, even if it means laying it on the, on the porch and saying it's there. When I walk away, you can come out and get it. We can volunteer our time to take them to an appointment. I know Miss Sue has done that. Take someone to a doctor's appointment, been there, prayed for them, help take care of them, you can go and just sit with them, talk to them, read them, read them the Bible if they can't read that well. Pick up their meds, pick up some groceries, take it to them. Clean their house if they're not able to. 
And then something as simple as seeing that they're not okay. When you're at church and you're always seeing somebody smile and all of a sudden you see them and they don't have that smile, you know something's not right. Something's not okay. You ask them. You don't have to get nosy. I do, but you just ask them. Is there anything I can pray about for you? What can I pray about? Anything in particular? How was this? How was that going? But the most important thing is praying with them, not saying, I'll pray for you, and you walk out the door. Praying for them is good. Remember them. But what they need to see is you praying with them, that you care enough to take the time to stop and pray with them. Praying with them is key because they hear it. They see that you're true to your word. They see that you don't just say it and then walk away, but they stand there and hear it, and then they walk away knowing that you just prayed for them. But serving others is also just about listening to people, loving them, showing them support, and that it can be done anywhere. Serving God is also about giving your tithes and your offering. And you say, how in the world is giving your tithes and your offering serving God? Well, your tithes and your offering go a long way. It allows your church to reach those who are out of our reach. Your tithes and offer make it possible for others to hear God's word, to make it possible for others to hear the worship, to be accepted in a place. It makes it possible for them to learn and to become disciples for Christ. And you say, well, how? Well, your tithes and offer go to electricity. It goes to the water. It goes to pay the taxes. It goes to maintenance on the building. You're not just sitting in here because it's free. The government doesn't offer it for free, so it goes somewhere. It goes for our pastor who gives us the word of God every single week, not once a day, but twice on Sundays and then on Wednesdays. I want to call you our associate pastor, but... Mine's well, oh well. It goes to our youth pastor who comes up with ways to draw your children in and to keep them wanting to know God's love. Part of it's for our connections pastor who looks after us, who if we've missed more than one or two Sundays, you're getting a phone call. Is everything okay? Is everything all right? Or you get a birthday card. It's to make sure that everyone is taken care of. And without none of that, it wouldn't be possible. It's visiting with some of our shut-ins and having study time, donating clothes to families in need and not the goodwill or having a yard sale. It's to do missionary work. And it doesn't have to be overseas. It can be here in North Carolina. It can be in your neighborhood. It can be in South Carolina. It can be anywhere in the U.S. There's plenty of mission trips taking places in this state. In and around, you go to Durham, there's tons of them. Not many people want to go there, but it's there. <laughs> It's following up with people who you know that need a friend and need prayer. It's sharing your talents and your gifts. If someone in this church is in need of something and you know how to do what it is they're in need of doing, offer it. Offer it to them. Oh, you need help with computers? Oh, my husband's great at that. <laughs> We're one. We're married, so I'm offering it. <laughs> It's encouraging someone. It's fulfilling your calling. God has called you to do it. Then you do it. But the main thing that I need you to take from what I have given you tonight is that you need to do it with a pure heart. You can be good and you can do things. You can do good things and you can live a good life. But that doesn't matter. None of that matters. There's a ton of good people in this world. I know some really great, great people. But if they've not accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior, that goodness gets them nowhere, especially there. So serving others without serving God is pointless. We know our works alone does not save us. But if our works is part of our ministry, 
then that ministry is serving God. If your heart is not right with God, then you are not serving him. You're just helping. You're just being a good friend. You're just being a good neighbor. And if you're not serving him, then you're serving yourself or you're serving the world. And we are told in this book that we're not to serve the world. We're not to follow the world. We are not to do as the world has called us to do. It says in Galatians 5.13, You are my brothers and sisters. You were called to be free, but do not use freedom to indulge the flesh rather than one another humbly in love. And 1 Peter 4.10 says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. And that can be any kind of gift. I look at Joy and I see her gift is prayer. It's like when I need prayer, which is all the time, especially last night. I'm just kidding. That's who I think about. That's who I think about. I hear her voice. It's so calming. It's literally calming to me. But I know she's one that's not going to say, I'll pray for you. She's one that I know will pray for me. It's like Mr. Tony. When I see him, I think, yes, prayer. He's, he's, he's my loud one. He's my spiritual warfare, get in it, groove, get down here and pray. That's what I think of. When I see Jonathan, I think of worship. Because he'll come up here and he will worship God with his whole entire heart. And you know it because you can hear it in his voice and his prayers. And you just know there's just a, a sense about it. It's just, it's just there. But Pastor Mark was originally going to preach on serving this past Sunday. I told you all about that. But God gave him something different, gave him something about seeking. And after I prepared this message, God started speaking to me about what it really means to serve. And I thought, well, God, I think I got it covered. I, I got everything you told me, like literally got everything you told me. And he says, no. He said, you know, you can't serve me if you don't seek me. And how many of us are serving others without seeking God first? Or how many of us are not serving or seeking? Like, when is the last time we prayed and asked God, what can we do for his kingdom? What can we do for his people? What can we do to help reach others, to help build that kingdom that he, that Jesus is up there preparing for us when is the last time we have prayed that prayer rather than saying God I need you right now I need you because my foot's hurting which it has been so y'all pray for my foot but how many times have we stopped and said God what is it that you need me to be doing instead of God I need you to do this and God I need you to do that and God I think I might need you to do this when is the last time we asked God, what do we need to be doing? And we think, oh, we serve God. We serve a great God. So I'm just going to go help this person. And that's great. But God might have something else for you to be doing while somebody else can go help serve that person. We need to be seeking where God needs to be sending us. Where he sends us is where our work will prosper. Where he sends us is where he knows we need to be, whether we think we need to be there or not. There's many times I'm like, God, I know you don't want me to go there. For real. And he's like, yes, I do. I'm like, seriously? And yes, I talk to him like that. I'm like, are you for real? Like, seriously, you need me to go there? And I hear, yes. And I'm, okay, I'll go. We need to be consistently, constantly fervently seeking him we need to be seeking his will for our life his call on our life we need to be praying his word over our life 
Because if we are not seeking him, we cannot, hear me loud and clear, if you are not seeking God, you cannot possibly serve him. Amen. You are serving man or you are serving yourself. No matter if it's a good deed or not. So are you seeking him enough? Are you serving him enough? Are you truly seeking him? I'm almost done. It says, and I was praying, and I added this at the end because I went home and was in the office praying, and I had God. I, could, I was in there praying. I was like, God, what else would you have me say? You know, when you hear that voice and you know it's from God, no matter how many times a day you might hear it, it's still like, <gasps> it's like I'm going to take it all in. I don't want to miss it. I still stop in my tracks. It don't matter if I'm halfway sitting down, I literally stop. And I'm like, I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm listening. Because if he talks to me, I better listen. He says, you know what keeps people from seeking me? I didn't have an answer. And I just said, I sat there. I said, well, maybe that was just me asking myself. Angel, do you know what keeps people from seeking me? I said, no. There, there's many things. He said, sin. Sin keeps us from seeking God. Because if there's ongoing sin in your life, if there's unconfessed sin in your life, if there's sin in your life that you're not being convicted of because you're ignoring the conviction of the Holy Spirit, you're not going to seek God. It's like a child that has stolen chewing gum out of their parent's purse. They want to put their head down and run and hide. They don't want that parent to look at them and say, you knew better, you're in trouble. It's natural. That's what we do. But if we just say, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, forgive me, then you can get right back in this word. You can start seeking him. And the more you confess and the more you seek, the closer you get and the more of his voice you will hear. Sin separates you. And when you're separated, when you're separated from God Almighty, you're not seeking him, you're not sharing him, and you sure enough are not serving him. Um, next Wednesday night, I forgot to announce earlier, Miss Joy will have a prayer service here. We're a church that believes in prayer, correct? Amen. We're a church that believes that God hears our prayers, correct? Yes, so show up next Wednesday night. It'd be like Angel said, Miss Joy is a powerful, powerful woman of prayer. Um, just some quick takeaways. Angel done a great job. And I, if you're watching online from another church, maybe down the road or something, I can say this and I want sincerity, and I'm sorry if you get offended by this, but I can be biased. We have some great teachers at this church. We really do. We have some great teachers. We have an awesome pastor. We're blessed at this church with everything that we have, like Angel said. And just some simple things. I'm like Pastor Mark when it comes to taking notes. I like to keep it just simple. She's done a great job. Serving takes loving, it takes listening, and it takes learning. And that's exactly what you've done an awesome job, sister. I'm extremely proud of you. I am. Extremely proud of you. Yeah. Good job. All right. Father, thank you for this day and your many blessings. Thank you for Angel, Lord, the calling you give her in her life to come up and proclaim your word. Father, such a powerful word tonight on serving. I thank you again, Lord, for each woman in this church. Women that's not afraid to stand up, that's not afraid to pray, that's not afraid, Father, to seek you, to serve you, to share you through teaching. I just thank you for them, Father. Women are important, and we, we need to understand that. They were the first ones that went to the tomb. And notice that you weren't there, Father. They went back and told the disciples. So women are extremely important in what we have going on in our church here and in the church globally. So I thank you for them. I thank you for each and every person, Father, and this church that does serve. I thank you for Jonathan and Pastor Mark and PJ, Brandy, Miss Cha, 
Carl, and the list goes on and on. The sound people for every person that makes their wheels turn on a Wednesday and a Sunday. I thank you for them personally right now, Father. I thank you for your presence in their life because they serve others, Lord, because they serve you first. And I just thank you for that. I thank you for our church being a church of love that truly loves God and truly loves people. And you can sense that when you walk on this campus. So, Father, thank you for your presence that was here tonight. And, Father, I know we'll hear good things about Pastor Mark, what he's preaching at tonight. So we thank you, Lord, for the God that you are, Father. We thank you for loving us and for keeping us like you do, Father. Be with us as we depart and go our separate ways tonight, Father. Keep us safe until we return again. In Jesus Christ's holy name, we offer up this prayer. Amen and amen.